It is Wednesday, February 3rd, 3.59 p.m. We're going to read Chapter 4 of Part 2 of Liber Eba, The Scourge, the Dagger, and the Chain. The scourge, the dagger, and the chain represent the three alchemical principles of sulfur, mercury, and salt. These are not the substances which we now call by these names. They represent principles whose operations chemists have found it more convenient to explain in other ways. But sulfur represents the energy of things, mercury their fluidity, salt their fixidity. They are analogous to fire, air, and water, but they mean rather more, for they represent something deeper and subtler, and yet more truly active. An almost exact analogy is given by the three gunas of the Hindus, Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas. Sattva is mercury, equable, calm, clear. Rajas is sulfur, active, excitable, even fierce. Tamas is salt, thick, sluggish, heavy, dark. There's a long description of these three gunas in the Bhagavad Gita. But Hindu philosophy is so occupied with the main idea that only the absolute is worth anything, that it tends to consider these gunas, even sattva, as evil. This is a correct view, but only from above, and we prefer, if we are truly wise, to avoid this everlasting wail which characterizes the thought of the Indian peninsula. Everything is sorrow, etc. Accepting their doctrine of the two phases of the Absolute, we must, if we are to be consistent, class the two phases together, either as good or as bad. If one is good and the other bad, we are back again in that duality, to avoid which we invented the Absolute. The Christian idea that sin was worthwhile because salvation was so much more worthwhile, that redemption is so splendid that innocence was well lost, is more satisfactory. St. Paul says, Where sin abounded, there did grace much more abound. Then shall we do evil that good may come? God forbid. But clearly it is exactly what God himself did, or why did he create Satan with the germ of his fall in him? Instead of condemning the three qualities outright, we should consider them as parts of a sacrament. This particular aspect of the scourge, the dagger, and the chain suggests the sacrament of penance. The scourge is sulfur, its application at sites are sluggish natures, and it may further be used as an instrument of correction to castigate rebellious volitions. It is applied to the nefesh, the animal soul, the natural desires. The dagger is mercury, it is used to calm too great heat by the letting of blood, and it is this weapon which is plunged into the side or the heart of the magician to fill the holy cup. Those faculties which come between the appetites and the reason are thus dealt with. The chain is salt, it serves to bind the wandering thoughts, and for this reason is placed about the neck of the magician, where Doth is situated. These instruments also remind us of pain, death, and bondage. Students of the Gospel will recollect that in the martyrdom of Christ these three were used, the dagger being replaced by the nails. This is true of all magical instruments. The hill of Golgotha is a circle, and the cross the tau. Christ had robe, crown, scepter, etc. This thesis should one day be fully worked out. The scourge should be made with a handle of iron. The lash is composed of nine strands of fine copper wire, in each of which are twisted small pieces of lead. Iron represents severity, copper love, and lead austerity. The dagger is made of steel inlaid with gold, and the hilt is also golden. The chain is made of soft iron. It has 333 links. It is now evident why these weapons are grouped around the phial of clear crystal in which is kept the holy oil. The scourge keeps the aspiration keen, the dagger expresses the determination to sacrifice all, and the chain restricts any wandering.